Hello everyone and welcome back in the AGC webinars. My name is Susanna Ayeti, account manager for AGC and the PCBs organizer for this session. As you might know, it doesn't matter if you're conducting an internal or an external audit of the ISO 4001, you, you will surely stumble on problems during this procedure. To talk about certain ways of carrying out the auditing process and other difficulties that may appear, Joining us, PCB Certified Trainer and Senior Consultant on uh, Occupational Health and Safety, Mr. Raza Shah. Feel free to write your questions and comments in the question box in the right-hand control panel, and Mr. Shah will answer to them accordingly. Moreover, if you want to participate directly in the discussion with Mr. Shah, you can also raise your hand, and then we will unmute your microphone, and you can make questions directly to him. Please, Mr. Shah, you may start the presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, I am uh, Raza Shah from Pakistan and uh, I am uh, editor for ISO 9000, ISO 14000, uh, ISO 22000, ISO 26000 and I am also uh, tenor for these uh, standards and I am our uh, advanced editor for SA 8000. Today the topic we are going to discuss is that difficulties in ISO 14000 auditing. Um, as you all uh, familiar that uh, 9000 is very common and very popular uh, standard as compared to the ISO 14000. ISO 14000 uh, is basically related to the environment management system and for uh, auditors uh, it is compulsory that they must be aware about uh, the <coughs> environment uh, knowledge, environmental knowledge. So, uh, Whichever uh, industry or organization uh, they want to audit, they must have the certain background of the environment um, terminology and environmental uh, knowledge. So, uh, like other order audits, uh, the procedure of the EMS auditing is the same and uh, the main thing is the auditor and the audit team. So, uh, selection of audit team is uh, important and then uh, uh, before this you have to be clear the audit objectives and the scope because if you are not clear <coughs> about the audit objectives and the scope you cannot select your audit team and uh, then uh, you have to uh, identify the audit criteria on which criteria you have to hmm, uh, conduct the uh, audit. Uh, normally, uh, in to, for the today discussion, our audit criteria is the ISO 14001 Environmental Management System. And uh, when these things are the clear, you have to plan for the audit program, and uh, uh, then you have to confirm uh, with the RDT, your client, that uh, we are going to uh, audit in this way, and. Uh, during the audit, you also need some checklist to guide you and the working documents. So, um, although uh, these uh, areas are common in all the audits, but uh, if, if uh, in the EMS or IS 14000, uh, these areas are more challenges, challenging than the uh, ISO 9000 because um, for the ISO 9000, uh, industrial uh, knowledge is enough, but for the EMS, you have to also have knowledge and background for the environment uh, knowledge. So, uh, uh, the main for, uh, uh, responsibility of at any audit and its success depend upon the lead editor. So, for uh, uh, ISO 14000, uh, you have to select the lead editor very carefully and the uh, lead editor should be able to lead the team and he should be able to plan the audit and he should be able to select the other members of his team and so, so the audit can be performed effectively and successfully and uh, if <coughs> if he the team leader or lead leader is not competent or uh, not capable of uh, uh, doing the audit in a fair manner or in a good manner then we will not be able to add value 
uh, after this audit. Uh, the lead editor has to confirm the scope of the audit uh, with the client. This, this is the important and uh, until unless you are not clear about uh, the scope of the audit, uh, you cannot manage the uh, audit team and you cannot uh, decide about the uh, uh, time you require to complete this uh, audit. Once uh, <coughs> you have the confirmed the scope, you have all the uh, related information to conduct the audit and you have to, as a lead editor, you have to uh, confirm that the organization is complying with the requirements of ISO 14000 and uh, uh, for this you have to assign tasks to the different members of the team who are, are um, supporting uh, to you during this audit and you have to ensure that uh, uh, you have as a lead editor you have the proper checklist and other documents and uh, um, protocols uh, you require to follow during the audit. So before uh, going to the audit, you must be clear about the scope, you must be clear about uh, the audit timing and uh, number of auditors required and uh, you have to uh, manage the uh, required documents which, are, uh, which you will use during the audit. And uh, as a lead editor, you have to uh, uh, convey the purpose and uh, the objective and the scope of the audit to all your uh, uh, audit team. You have to uh, solve any problem if there is uh, any problem uh, uh, which is facing uh, your uh, audit team and uh, you have to rep represent or lead your audit team uh, during the meeting and during the whole uh, audit process and uh, you as a lead editor have to complete the uh, audit report and the findings of the audit report and uh, you are the uh, responsible for all these things uh, although the other uh, uh, member of your team are with you but uh, ultimately responsibility lies with the uh, lead editor. <coughs> Uh, the different uh, certification bodies have the different criteria uh, for the lead editor. So uh, it is not hard and fast uh, um, uh, for the different CVs that what they have set the criteria, but uh, they have set, uh, set the specific criteria, experience, knowledge, and uh, the lead editor should be ISO 14000 qualified. And uh, the lead editor uh, define the scope and objectives of the audit uh, with uh, uh, the uh, client and um, these scope and uh, criteria must be uh, agreed between the uh, lead editor and the client. Uh, when we talk about uh, the uh, audit objectives, it should be clear uh, to the um, lead editor and to the client and to the other member of uh, the team that why we are conducting this audit. Maybe the purpose of the audit uh, is the uh, ISO certification or just it may be internal audit or maybe uh, some second party audit. So the audit objective should be clear to each party or each stakeholder. And uh, uh, at the same time, the scope of the audit should be also uh, clear and which organization we are going to audit and which facility we are going to audit and uh, EMS elements we have to audit or activities we, we have to audit. So, um, in, in this case, um, uh, the audit criteria um, is IAS of 14001 and at the same time definitely uh, we have to uh, take care of the regulatory requirement for uh, audit. And uh, uh, you have to ensure that your audit team 
is familiar with the process and facility and uh, you have enough uh, number of audits and uh, if there is any conflict of interest you have to resolve and uh, you have to uh, mm, ensure that uh, facility has fulfilled the, all the requirements. So uh, mm, if there, there is a small uh, organization you have to uh, you require um, one or two auditors but if there is a large organization you need more auditor and uh, uh, auditor should be competent and uh, that uh, they can perform uh, the audits and they uh, of the facility and they should be familiar with uh, uh, the industry and the activities of the facility uh, and uh, you uh, you uh, if you require you have to add the technical expert if you uh, think that the uh, you have you as a leader don't have the uh, experience of some specific industry you have to add an expert of this industry in your uh, audit team and uh, the audit team uh, 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 have to uh, first thing uh, the audit team have to follow the instructions and guidance of the uh, uh, lead editor and uh, they will perform the uh, assigned task uh, which was assigned by the lead editor and uh, they will uh, as a team member they will prepare the working document and collect uh, evidences and document the findings and uh, they, will, they will protect the documents and uh, when during the report writing phase will be started uh, they will assist uh, the uh, uh, report writer uh, for uh, the completion of the report and uh, for the non-conformance um, uh, development. Uh, so uh, uh, ISO uh, auditor uh, for ISO 14001 must have the educational work experience and uh, uh, he must have the enough experience uh, specifically for literal knowledge environment he must uh, be aware of the environmental science and technology he must be aware about the environment aspects and operation and uh, uh, regulation and uh, he must be uh, aware with the ISO 14000 standard and uh, he must be aware with the ordered procedure process and techniques um, uh, which uh, are used uh, to conduct this audit. So uh, the, the uh, auditor uh, must be train uh, and uh, he must have the uh, skills, uh, speaking and writing abilities, uh, he must have the speaking and writing abilities and uh, strong entrepreneur uh, skills and act objectively, uh, be organized and ethical. So uh, an editor must have all uh, these cat uh, uh, qualities. These are the same uh, like the other um, ISO uh, auditing required and he as a editor he have to continue to maintain his skill and knowledge through education and trainings. And the two, uh, it is also very uh, important to, uh, uh, to select the right uh, auditors uh, for an audit team. So you have to conduct the interviews uh, of the candidate. You have to uh, see how uh, they write and how they speak and their communication skills and you can also <coughs> evaluate them through uh, role playing exercises and you have to um, also uh, evaluate uh, them um, uh, by uh, well, uh, seeing their uh, professional uh, certificates and uh, their 
uh, educational uh, degrees. So uh, during the audit, you have to audit basically in the four uh, areas and uh, which are uh, the policies, procedure, practices and requirements. So, uh, so, uh, and uh, you have to uh, first determine the audit criteria against which you are evaluating these policies, procedure uh, and uh, requirements. So uh, you, uh, uh, in our case, the audit criteria is ISO 14000 and uh, to understand uh, these uh, requirements, uh, you can also uh, go through the guidelines and uh, uh, at the same time we, uh, uh, the organization uh, to implement the organization has developed uh, some documentation documents for the implementation of these standards and these uh, uh, are the regulatory requirement uh, environment safety manual aspect and objectives so uh, these are the uh, uh, criteria you have to uh, check that either uh, the organization is fulfilling this criteria or not. Uh, the main item uh, is the audit plan, which uh, when you are uh, going to be audited before uh, conducting the audit, you have to prepare your plan and you have to send this plan to your uh, client. And, uh, the audit plan, uh, in audit plan you have to uh, describe your scope, objectives and criteria and uh, the premises you will <coughs> audit and uh, uh, how many auditors you are going to use and uh, uh, which documents you will uh, use uh, for the auditing of uh, any um, activity. So uh, in the plan you have to do all these uh, um, uh, things and you have to cover all these aspects. And, uh, dates and places and um, uh, audit team members schedule you have to uh, uh, fulfill all these requirements while you are going to plan and audit. And at the same time you have to prepare your working documents which you will use uh, during the audit and these are the forms, checklists and um, records how, of meetings maintain uh, you will maintain all these things uh, your audit notes till the audit will be completed and uh, you will keep uh, uh, this uh, these uh, records uh, with the audit back. Uh, you to, uh, to give a direction to uh, your audit at what you have to go uh, do next. You have to develop a proper checklist. Uh, checklist will help you uh, that what you have to do, and uh, uh, it will help you to miss any activity which are which is required to be uh, conducted or which is required uh, to be audited. So uh, in the uh, audit uh, checklist you have to uh, describe the audit criteria departments you will audit uh, and uh, you will um, uh, uh, ask in the following way who, what, when, where, why, how and show me. You will ask uh, each and every question uh, in your checklist. So uh, any activity will be evaluated in a proper manner. As a lead editor, when uh, before going to the audit, uh, you, uh, you uh, or conducting an audit, you have to review the uh, ISO doc documentation, and if there is some uh, missing area or something is not uh, uh, fulfilling the requirements of the standard, you can raise a, a red flag or you can raise a major non-conformity. And uh, you have to verify the environmental management system of the company 
is fulfilling the requirements of ISO 14000 and uh, you uh, this all this activity is the based on the sample sample we cannot uh, uh, check each and everything because we have limited time so uh, we have to uh, uh, select a sample and sample should be true representative of the population and uh, um, on the basis of uh, this sample we write our findings or we uh, come to some result uh, you have to ensure that uh, system is properly implemented and fulfilling the all the requirements of the uh, ISO 14001 to the ISO 14001 uh, so uh, uh, the ISO 14000 uh, has the two uh, two uh, steps one step is the document review, review uh, and uh, second is the uh, on site audit so uh, before going to the uh, on site uh, you have to review the documentation of the organization you have to review their environmental policy you have to review their manual their procedures and uh, their uh, internal audit uh, records and their <coughs> environmental aspects and impacts uh, on the day of the audit, the audit will be started with the opening meeting and it is very important uh, event which uh, give the first impression to the client and uh, as a lead editor, uh, the lead editor uh, will conduct this opening meeting, he will introduce himself and his team to the, uh, the art, uh, client or RDT oh, and uh, he will uh, discuss the schedule and he will uh, confirm the uh, availability of the uh, required facilities or logistic issues. Uh, and uh, at the, uh, during the opening meeting you will also uh, explain the nature of the non conformities and you will also uh, set the time and date for the closing meeting and you will also invite the RDT for uh, any uh, question, uh, if uh, they want to know any information, they can uh, ask you. And uh, during the audit, you have to gather the audit evidence, and these are the information records, statements of it, and uh, uh, these are the procedures uh, and implementation of the procedures and the records uh, which are. Uh, created by the uh, organization for during the implementation of these procedures and uh, you have to ensure that the proper training has been provided to the personnel who are implementing these procedures. Uh, so uh, you can uh, conduct, uh, collect and, and uh, evidence through interviews and uh, by examination of uh, documentation or uh, observations. So uh, you can uh, get the information by uh, these three uh, ways. And uh, you have to ensure that you are asking the right questions and to the right persons. So um, it, it is not, it will be better that uh, you uh, identify the persons uh, you want to audit uh, interview. Uh, so it is uh, uh, it will be good that if you are not limit uh, do not limit uh, your question to the managers only. You have to also ask to the workers and operators and the supervisors and non managerial staff and. Uh, 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 you should uh, ask the open-ended questions and uh, uh, you should listen the answers of the uh, interviews, interviews very carefully and uh, you uh, when you start interview you should explain and the purpose of the interview and uh, you should uh, introduce yourself and then uh, start uh, uh, getting information from uh, the uh, um, RDT uh, or interview in a very positive manner and do not uh, do not 
uh, speak negatively or uh, do not uh, sar uh, speak in a sarcasm way. Uh, you, um, uh, the interview should be structured and you have to uh, well call the person before uh, conducting the interview. And uh, uh, a leader should be very a uh, attentive patient and play uh, should pay a close attention response uh, so you have to maintain your interest and uh, um, do not uh, uh, judge uh, anything on the very early stage you have to uh, collect more and more evidences and uh, you have to uh, support uh, any fact by a different ways. Uh, so uh, uh, you and uh, you have to uh, review the uh, EMS documents and uh, you have to confirm that uh, the required documents are available on the related places and uh, uh, the uh, requirements uh, aspects are properly identified and the legal requirements are uh, properly identified and fulfilled and objectives and targets are established after different areas and uh, environment management uh, procedure exist in different areas and if there is a change it should be documented and uh, uh, training records should be maintained and uh, proof of internal and external communication should be maintained and uh, the documents should be identified and obsolete documents should be uh, separated from uh, any, any misuse and uh, uh, you have to ensure that emergency preparedness is in place and uh, monitoring and measurement is uh, uh, available. Uh, so um, uh, you have to uh, uh, ensure that uh, uh, corrective action has been uh, taken at the appropriate time and these are the uh, closed properly environmental records uh, are uh, identifiable, traceable and legible and management review has uh, been occurred uh, according to the plan interval and who is responsible for uh, different uh, activities and uh, you have to ensure and uh, uh, evaluate all these uh, efforts. Uh, during uh, the audit and you are uh, uh, working and going to the different departments, you should watch each and everything very uh, play, uh, carefully and you have to pay close attention uh, to uh, environmental, uh, different uh, significant environmental uh, and you do you should avoid to uh, reach to any concern uh, suddenly you have to observe the thing and uh, you also check the little document and you uh, should conduct the interview and <coughs> on the basis of these uh, sources of information you should then uh, reach to some certain um, decision and uh, there are uh, because the, you, during the interview you have to uh, uh, get many uh, information so in uh, uh, the employees show so you have to uh, be familiar with the different behaviors of the employees and uh, um, some plus may be prehensive some plus may be disgruntled uh, and some employees uh, there is uh, somewhere poor communication, there is some that there is bad timing and language barrier and so uh, you have to uh, do uh, an uh, interview in a way that you can get uh, uh, the information in a very right and uh, uh, effective manner. The, uh, um, there are something, uh, if you uh, see that there is something that uh, not uh, complying with the requirements of the standard then you have to uh, you raise the non-conformance. Non-conformance uh, uh, if uh, 
any clause of the um, uh, IS 14000 standard is not uh, addressed, you can raise the um, non-conformance. Non-conformance uh, can be major or minor. So, uh, if, if uh, a, a, any clause of the IS 14000 uh, standard is not addressed, then it will be major uh, non-conformance. And if the, the clause is addressed, but uh, in a weak manner, then you can raise the minor uh, non-conformance. And uh, if as a leader you uh, feel that uh, uh, if this practice will be continued, uh, then you can raise the uh, observation. Um, the observation is basically not, not a uh, not a non-compliance of uh, uh, standard, but uh, if if you feel that if this practice will continue, then it may uh, become the non-conformance. So uh, there are uh, three uh, basic or important uh, part of uh, an audit activity. The first is the planning and the second is the audit itself and the third is the audit report. So you have to, uh, uh, what you have uh, done during the audit, you have to report it. So uh, you have uh, to uh, describe the nature of uh, uh, non-performance uh, in a separate manner. So uh, what what is the missing? or uh, what are the elements which uh, are uh, not addressed uh, by the environment management system, you have to raise non-conformance report. So uh, it should be one page report and uh, it should be reported to the management and uh, it should be mentioned that either this is the major non-conformance or minor non-conformance and where this non-conformance was raised. You have to mention the uh, locality, department, and uh, uh, and which uh, you have to also mention the which clause of uh, IS 14000 has not been addressed uh, properly. And uh, this uh, non-conformance report should be uh, properly signed. Yeah, the very difficult uh, and very demanding uh, area is the uh, environment law. So um, there are many uh, environment law as and as a uh, EMS editor or lead editor you should be very uh, familiar uh, with them. And uh, these laws are not uh, one page document. These are um, very a heavy document and um, you have to uh, go through all these uh, laws so you can um, uh, evaluate and uh, check uh, how these laws and have been addressed by the uh, RDT. And uh, then you have to uh, uh, prepare the summary of the audit findings and uh, you have to uh, mention the which areas uh, are properly addressed and which areas uh, need to be improved. So uh, yeah, you, have, you have to prepare at the end of the audit, you have to uh, prepare a comprehensive report and this is the main uh, responsibility of the lead editor uh, who will uh, prepare this report. You have to uh, mention who, uh, which departments and which people have participated uh, in this audit and um, you have to mention the scope and objective of the audit and you have to uh, uh, give the uh, document reference numbers you have uh, seen your uh, during the audit and um, uh, you have to give a short summary of each non-conformity and uh, you have to uh, <coughs> describe the summary of each area which you have 
web audit. So uh, this is all about uh, the difficulties uh, we face uh, during the uh, uh, ISO 14001 audit. Um, if if these are uh, um, basically these are the steps we follow during the audit. And but if uh, we uh, are weak in any area, this will create uh, more problem for us, and uh, this will uh, definitely a difficult situation if you, we are not following these steps properly. So this is uh, all for today. Uh, Mr. Shah, thank you for this presentation. Uh, we have a lot of questions, uh, but we have a limited time, so we'll try to answer two of them. Uh, the, you have mentioned uh, some of the most <coughs> common problems during the auditing. But according to your experience, uh, what are the most common problems in general that may come up uh, during the auditing process? For example, take an example of uh, something that happened uh, to you. Uh, mo most uh, uh, difficult area is the uh, environmental law because uh, every region and every state have different environmental law. So uh, as an editor, uh, when uh, when we are moving to the different uh, regions, uh, we have to be very familiar with these laws. And uh, and I as I have mentioned during my presentation that in laws are not uh, uh, small papers. These are the uh, very uh, uh, huge books sometimes and a number of pages sometimes. So uh, uh, during evaluation of uh, a system for EMS and editor should be very much familiar with, with these laws because uh, the standard also uh, says that we have to fulfill the laws so uh, um, the standard is the same but the laws vary different in the different regions okay thank you and the second question is uh, what is your general advice for organizations regarding the auditing process um, the, uh, the the important thing is the training. They must uh, uh, train their force so uh, in a way that maximum managerial uh, staff or even the non-managerial staff uh, become the familiar with the requirement of the standard. If the uh, if the more people are aware with the requirements of the standard. They, they, it will be very easy for them and that they will implement uh, the standard in a good manner and uh, if somebody is aware of the requirements, he will be basically doing his audit uh, by himself and then they will be prepared, uh, very, very well prepared for any coming audit. So, so uh, they should, should focus on our trainings. Okay, uh, Mr. Shah, thank you once again for this presentation. Uh, I would also like to thank all the attendees for taking the time out of their busy schedule to join us. We hope you enjoyed this webinar. We received all of your questions, but because the time is limited, we will answer to your questions individually by email. Also, don't forget to check PCB's webinar schedule on our website, pcb.com, or our social media network. See you next week, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.